up, everyone? My name is AJ Writes Crypto, and welcome to the roundtable. Got a lot to talk about today. I'm really looking forward to getting into today's show. And I might sound excited. I might sound excited. That's because I am. That's because I am. Bitcoin, Bitcoin has not only got above 50,000, it has bullishly retested off of 48,000, which was a sore thumb of a support resistance level before. And the $48,000 level, one of the most important SR levels on the Bitcoin chart. We bullishly retested it, got back past 50,000 and are at now 51, where, you know, 52,000, another SR line, we're getting rejected from, but hey, it's okay. As long as we stay above 48,000, we're, we're continuing the bullish momentum for sure. And Bitcoin is now back above $1 trillion. And what's funny, what's funny, actually, if you look at the total, the total crypto chart, uh, the total, when you add Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the altcoins, all the stable coins together, we're at 1.87 trillion. 1.87 trillion, where the tippy tippy top of November of 2021 was just over 3 trillion. So we are well on our way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we Everyone is feeling very bullish right now. And this is kind of, you know, the meat and potatoes of what I want to talk about on the show today with you all is, you know, making money, investment strategies. You know, like, are you, are you, are you staking? Are you trading? Are you just picking the right coins? Are, are you timing the market well? Are, are you scalping? Uh, are you, are, is there, you know, are you yield farming? Um, airdrops? There's so many ways to make money in this space. And I really just want to focus on th that, the essence of that today. You know, there, there's other news we could get into if the conversation, you know, runs out. But but I, I do, I want to ask you guys, we have a lot of really, really amazing speakers all up here on the stage today. And I want to ask you guys, you know, one by one, what your strategy is that to to really get those gains as we continue further into this bull market. I think it's a conversation that people kind of dance around sometimes. I think it's something, you know, people don't ever really just give like a straight answer on like what they're doing. But I, I think, you know, there's thousands of people out there that, that you know, we have the momentum uh, or, or how, you know, or how to at least, even if they're making money, how to maximize making as much as you can at, while we have these primo market conditions. So, you know, that, that's the conversation that I want to have today. So we've got a bunch of awesome speakers here on the stage. Going to pass it to my guy Riggs first at Kyle Riggins with that sick pudgy penguin PFP. Hell yeah. I mean, you have, you have a pudgy penguin, so you must know something about making money in crypto. Riggs, what do you got, bro? How you been? <laughs> <laughs> What's good, everybody? You know, nothing like picking the right cartoon JPEG, right? You know, that is absolutely the strategy uh, that seems to work best. Uh, no, I think the conversation is great. I mean, as we are, are transitioning back into, I guess, a bull market, right? I mean, it's one of those where I feel like if you've been here through the bear, it's you got a little PTSD. And I think we're a little bit hesitant to say that we're moving into the bull, but uh, it, it does feel that way. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I think doesn't get the respect that it should is crypto Twitter. And I think narratives and stories sell. And so I'm a big believer. I, I've been, uh, you know, when I got reached out to come on the show, I was like, is what's working full-time in Web3 mean this and that? Are you trading? Are you actually working? I've done both, right? And, and right now I'm focused primarily on trading. And I'm a big believer of riding the wave of the stories and riding the wave of the narratives. And so I just watch where the, the focus is going. I mean, it was not hard to see, like especially if you look at NFTs, which I know, AJ, you're not super into NFTs based on my last time coming on the show. But if you look at NFTs, it wasn't hard to tell at 1.8 to 2 ETH that doodles were going to go on a run. Just wasn't going to, it wasn't difficult. And so if you pay attention to that timeline and the narrative, here we are today, they're above three and we're cooking, right? And so I just think narratives, pay attention to it. Uh, the, the, the challenge of those narratives is not getting too sucked in uh, and where you feel like you're underexposed. Uh, I think we've all done that where we feel, oh my God, this is this is going crazy. I'm underexposed. Double down, <laughs> triple down. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the narrative shifts, the, the 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 euphoria transitions into a little more stress uh, as that that 
the chart turns a little bit red. And so have your exit strategies, ha- have the plan in place. And so I've been doing pretty well just following the narratives. Uh, like Bitcoin puppets, another one that was super easy to tell. People fucking hate those things because they make no sense. And so it was like, buy them and then flip them. I'm not an ordinal guy. I, I Good Things knows this. I think ordinals are hot garbage for the most part. Uh, I know, I know. But I got to keep it 100. I got to keep on brand here. And so uh, I, I just don't like the ordinal. I think the user experience is garbage, but you can make money doing it. And so if you pay attention, that's another good narrative. So I know I've, that was a lot. I rambled on. That's where I'll end right now. Dude, well put. Well put. And I, I got to make a correction. I, I love NFTs. I have a, I have a Camp I Panda. I have a Sappy Seal. I'm involved. I'm involved. You know, I, do, I, do, I, do I flip things on OpenSea as much as I scalp trade, leverage trade crypto on Femex? No. No, I don't. But I, I'm very much finger on the pulse of the NFT space for sure. And I'm um, you know, crying. I cry myself to sleep every night that I did not buy a little pudgy at less than one Ethereum. But that's what I get. That's what I get for hesitating. And I think that's, that's a lesson. Don't hesitate. Do not hesitate. I, I did a tweet yesterday, and I'm going to read it because I think a lot of people might need to hear it if you didn't see it. The tweet reads, you either have conviction or you don't. Hesitation equals trouble. Avoid tricking yourself into making fear-based decisions. Those are commonly referred to as mistakes. Don't stress. Don't get impatient. Just put on your damn seatbelt. We're going to the moon. And I, and I stand by that. I stand by that because I have conviction and I, have no, I know what it's like to hesitate and miss a big move. It happens all the time. But the beauty about crypto is just because even if you just got into crypto today and today's your first day in crypto, guess what? You can still make millions of dollars if you plug in and you know what you're doing and you learn all the things about there. There's so many opportunities in crypto. And, and I think because there's so many opportunities, I feel like people feel like they miss out on this or miss out on that. I think uh, the ability to really zone in on your specific focus and zoom in, zoom, in, zoom in on like what you're trying to do. I know people that are scalp traders that only like to trade short. They're good at finding reversals. So they, they, they only trade short with heavy leverage. And that works for them. So they stick, they stick to their playbook. I know some people that, you know, only flip NFTs and don't even mess with like normal lever trading. I mean, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat here, but uh, the point is, is to don't hesitate. And when like your that gut feeling tells you to, you know, go with something nine times out of 10, you know, don't talk yourself out of that light bulb moment. Uh, that, that is a lesson that I have learned and learned the hard way because in crypto you pay for your mistakes. There is no question about that at all. So going to c- continue the conversation here. Going to pass it to my guy. Good things. Good things. Um, making money is a good thing. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think it's a really good thing. I mean, I think um, people don't really do much in this world um, without being financially incentivized. And that's not necessarily a terrible thing. That's just the way the world works. Um, and so I think as long as we're aware of what we're doing here in this industry, um, we are here to make money, uh, as well as you know, drive culture and technology forward. Uh, I think it's, I think it's good. Um, you know, I, I agree with with a lot of what Rick said, um, except for the ordinal's hot, hot garbage part. We can just cut that out um, right now. But um, <laughs> no, I mean, like making money here. You know, I always tell people if you've got if you're coming with capital, then you need knowledge, right? You don't want to be deploying capital um, without the knowledge of how you're deploying it, why you're deploying it, and that conviction that you just mentioned, super important. But if you're coming with no capital or little capital, like I know a lot of people come into this industry, then you want to start earning capital so that you can deploy, um, you know, maybe not so much in the right in the media term, but maybe in the medium to long term. And the key to making money uh, here as well as just anywhere in the world, like any industry, is have a long-term mindset. Don't think you're going to come in and hit Pilato like everybody does. Um, we all get FOMO. We see on, we go on a timeline and we see like these huge dubs, somebody posting. It really is like, it, it is pretty rare. Um, and it's hard. It's, it's a lot of luck, a little bit of skill um, to hit those 100 Xs. But um, the key is always like get into a network, right? Get into either a, a, you know, a group of folks who can teach you um, or get into a community where you can, you know, there's learning happening where everybody's teaching each other. Like that's the ultimate alpha, um, you know, is, is get in with a good group of people who know what they're doing. Are you telling um, us or, to get into a cabal? 
Is that what? Because I, I agree with that. Get into the cabal. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I mean, if you can't get into the cabal, then form your own fucking cabal. Like that's really the alpha, and that's that's what I've been you know working with a lot of people in this industry to do is we really are forming our own cabal, and it's not like it's not actually you know the cabal, but it's like a group of people who are who are growing together. And I think the opportunity right now is for everybody to start figuring out how they can do that, right? And NFTs is a great way to do it. Like the puppets. Um, those guys are winning. Um, it was it was a relatively cheap entry, and there'll be many more. I mean, right now you've got uh, floor forms, right, which was kind of like a almost free mint, and it's still like a relatively cheap entry. I don't know if that's going to be a giant community or not, but there's there's um, there's different avenues you can go. But the main thing is is find your people that can teach you, and if if you're not learning with the group of people that you're with, find a new group of people. Well put. Very well put. I mean, you're, um, you know, you are your five best friends, you know, I, uh, th- that is certainly very true. I mean, I've been in, uh, you know, discords and alpha groups and some of them straight fire, some of them straight fire and some of them kind of die down and you kind of need to know when to pivot away. Like just how you have to need to know when to pivot out of a coin. You need to know when to pivot out of a circle uh, and to get into and to get into a new one and like diversify your connections just as much as you diversify your portfolio. One hundred percent, I completely agree with that sentiment. Good share, man. Good share. I want to pass it to my guy Bolt mainly because I really like his PFP and and I want to hear what his thoughts are. What's up, man? GM, GM, bro. Uh, okay. Am I audible? Hello. We we got Wait, you. Can you? Yeah, hear I, I got him. Cool. So basically, okay, I completely second. agree with good things at the moment, and I personally built my community myself, uh, a cabal, you could say, and it it's it was it started as an ETH cabal, but we yeah, transitioned to ordinals in February two thousand twenty three, and now we get almost everything which comes out in ordinals, and exactly. Uh, making the uh, growing your network is the play at the moment, and the bear was the best time to do that. And now it's giving uh, the fruits of uh, the the dark days we went through. And overall, um, I would say, uh, uh, yeah, the one thing I had in my mind was that. Uh, when uh, in uh, regarding to taking profits, uh, whenever I see screenshots on my timeline, uh, that's the point I decide I will sell my bags and move on. <laughs> so, the 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 your if your feed is optimized well, it, that's your sentiment of the market. What you shall do? Seeing the KSI's tweet yesterday, that was a a small sell signal for me, but the market still pumped and. Uh, anyhow, I, I didn't understand why I was just feared out of K- KSI coming out uh, suddenly. So, uh, 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 keep in mind that uh, I don't usually speak on faces. I'm just uh, coming out of my shell slowly. So, that's all from my side. Thanks, Bolt. AJ, I think he's done. I don't think you could hear him. We're going to keep this thing rolling then. I hate silence on spaces. I'm not a co-host Let's go. here. Guest, guest co-host, Riggs. Let's go. Guest, guest okay. co-host here. I totally agree with you though, Bolt, when it comes to uh, screenshots. You don't know how many screenshots in 2021 I took sending to people. And I was like, look at this shit. And then all of a sudden, I don't want to send a screenshot of what that stuff was worth today. Exactly. All right, let's pick you up. Uh, Screenshots. Wait. You don't know. Oh boy. Okay. Thank you for the Sorry. opportunity. I, I I got rugged. I'm on this. I'm on the Mario page now. I don't know what happened to my my mute button would not unmute. Uh, apologize for that. Um, but yeah. I so strategies making money as a trader. My personal strategy is to really keep up with the the trend is always your friend, and I know that's generic, but I don't mean in terms of a chart going up. I mean in the ecosystems that are popping off. Recently, I've made a bunch of money on Pyth. P-Y-T-H. One, it's in the Solana ecosystem. And Solana 
is absolutely on fire now. Have a Solana price prediction coming out of my YouTube channel here pretty soon. Pith got the Solana narrative covered. It also is an Oracle. And what people need to understand about Oracles is that Chainlink dominates 90 to 92 percent of the Oracle space in terms of dominance. So if any Oracle is somewhat competitive and can get 5 percent, 3 percent of the market share, it is going to do very well. And I feel like Pith, that narrative is doing very well, that not to mention the chart setup, not to mention how much it's gone up uh, in the past week alone, in the past week alone. And these are the types of narratives, the types of coin selection, uh, the types of like how much capital you deploy into a project like this. I mean, talk, we're up 70% in 13 days, guys, 70% in 13 days. And I, and I feel like being able to catch on to that trend early enough um, kind of identifying that and realizing bullish continuation patterns of bullish continuation and saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to ride this thing out with a heavy amount of capital. Uh, is it scary at first? Yes, but you have to have conviction and you have to like trust in the, the ecosystem and the narrative. So I, I trust in the Oracle narrative. I trust in the Solana narrative. And I told myself, you know, back at 30, 35 cents that this thing was going to rip. Now it's 65. Still, it broke out of an uptrend. It broke out of an uptrend. And, you know, these these are the things, just one project at a time, one NFT at a time, one ordinal, uh, putting in enough capital for it to make a difference. I know people who, you know, they see a project and what do they do? They, they throw a hundred bucks at it, a hundred bucks. And I'm like, why? Why? Like, if it doubles, you're only going to have $200. What are you doing? Like, I am the kind of person, uh, scared money don't make money. You know, you have to, you have to be willing and ready to put your money where your mouth is. And I feel like the, 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 the hesitation, I always will circle back to that. Hesitation definitely equals trouble and uh, be, be ready to deploy up for sure. want to uh, keep going. We have a lot of amazing speakers here on stage as well. going to pass it to my guy, Paul Laskarzewski. Yes. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, that's uh, almost properly. Pavel Laskarzewski. Uh, basic Pavel is the same name as Paul, uh, Pablo and Paolo. So they, meet, they call me different names in different cities worldwide. Uh, so, uh, yeah, money making, um, as I'm, uh, in the money making business actually by running quant based hedge fund, uh, which is tokenized, I can speak about this topic for hours because this is one of my favorite topics, how to make money. Uh, but I will tell you about like my personal strategy in crypto, uh, what, what, what I'm doing, right? I split it, my personal capital in crypto onto, uh, four main, uh, baskets. One is like long, long-term wallet where I'm investing mostly top tier coins that have like some um, ability to grow. Like for example, I am more Ethereum over the Bitcoin because I, I believe like e Ethereum have much more uh, potential to grow, especially with upcoming ETFs on, on Ethereum that might be massive. And with upcoming uh, update on Ethereum as well, which should decrease the gas prices, which should increase the TVL and everything. So like all those factors and the big, you know, L2 and L3 narrative that is around that, I believe like all those, you know, L2s and L3s are mostly secured by, by Ethereum. So this should bring a lot of, you know, hype for that. So this is one of my like long term um, uh, bets. Then I have this short term speculative wallet for, for different uh, things that are happening, like we have a dip on the market. There is another, you know, inf news about the CPIs or something on on uh, in states, and we see that you know the markets are d drowning. So, so to get in and to to make some fast money, this is not something that most of the people can do because they don't know usually how to exit, which was uh, an element that that one of the previous speakers also touched. Uh, because I believe this is one of the most important thing, you know, to to realize uh, your 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 uh, your profits uh, because most of the people don't know um, when when to do so because they all they think that it's always gonna grow um, so that's the second uh, the second uh, portion of my capital the third one uh, is something that is uh, super interesting in crypto and it's not basically available on traditional markets so those are the pre-sales and as you know um, uh, we have some network in the market as we know venture capital firms uh, like most Probably a lot of people that are on this space have a very similar approach. Um, we are able to get in into some interesting projects early on, on the seed round, like before the listing. Sometimes it's like two weeks before the listing. Sometimes it's two years before the listing. And with uh, such an approach, 
we can get the most of that market. This is also something I, I would say this is a part also of that speculative uh, part because you never know what's going what's gonna to happen. Sometimes you get rigged, sometimes you will have 5x, sometimes you will, uh, the token will drown and sometimes you will have 100x. But it's a, spec it, it's a statistical game. So um, if you will, you know, with a fairly, let's say, maybe not super big capital like millions, but if you will get enough uh, tickets and will have an interesting due diligence process, like not interesting, but the good due diligence process of those projects, uh, the statistics will, will do its own, you know, especially during, during the market that we have right now. And the last element is uh, I have those quant strategies that, that uh, we are building by ourselves and uh, I'm putting uh, the fourth uh, portion of the capital into my own quant strategies that are operating on the market, are looking closely on what is happening on the traditional market, in the crypto market, on the news, this and that. And this is also the, the, the other, you know, factor that I, I'm using. Of course, very important thing that is uh, super, super important is, is risk management. Uh, is most of the people, they go all in, uh, they do not uh, have any risk management rules and that's why, in most cases, that got liquidated very fast, even during the bull market when everything is growing. Uh, because, you know, you have those pullbacks sometimes, and that's the moment when, you know, they don't uh, know how to handle that and they, they, they lose capital. So those are the four main ways how I distribute my own personal capital. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's, that's it, period. <laughs> Well put, well put. And I, I really like what you said there about risk management. Risk management is really the bread and butter of, of you know, actually realizing the profits. You know, no one ever went broke taking profits. You know, uh, as you know, as a scalp trader, leverage trader myself, uh, I, I personally run super, super tight stop losses, like scary yes. tight stop losses. And, 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 I, and the thing is, I can lose eight trades in a row and win the ninth trade and be profitable. You know, the, you know the, you have you have to be able to 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 realize that it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to get stopped out. Don't chase it. Just just find another position and try. It's a mindset again. thing. And it's I, a mindset thing. Very often. It, it, yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. But then, and thanks so much for your share, man. Got a lot out of that. Got my guy R. G. Brad. Brad Mills. What's going on? Hey, AJ. Here? Thanks a lot. I just uh, stepped out of the sauna here um, on my uh, 20,000 square foot property in Ontario, Canada, where I built it with my bare hands and my big beard. I have a 6,000 square meat property on the land, and I have a sauna, all from my uh, Bitcoin holdings. And RGB is something very interesting that's making me uh, feel bullish. But I just want to ask you first before I go on, is this a... A talk show, or is this a serious educational show? I, I mean, they make it, man. We're just, you know, the ideas, ideas. Good. You know, okay, a lot of good. People, I feel like in crypto. Yeah. So, well, before I give you my my uh, Bitcoin thesis, we need to take it back to the 1970s with the development of public key cryptography, which allowed for secure communication and digital signatures. It's a foundational technology for cryptocurrencies. That led us into the 1980s when the concept of digital cash and cryptographic protocols began to emerge with pioneers like David Chom advocating for privacy, privacy enhanced electronic transactions. Into the 1990s, it uh, continued the advancements with the cypherpunk movement and the cryptography growth of the internet, set the stage for the digital currency revolution. Uh, you know, DigiCash, eGold ultimately failed, but Bitcoin in 2008 playing on some of these developments. We saw the introduction of, of uh, the Byzantine generals problem being solved by Satoshi Nakamoto, a pseudonymous cypherpunk who published the white paper and the code. Now, there was no pre-mine of Bitcoin. And if we want, we can actually take it back even further with the introduction of the, uh, the transistor back in the 1850s. I mean... If you really want to talk about why Bitcoin is valuable, we need to have a very deep, long, two-hour conversation about what got us to Bitcoin. Would you like to continue? Nope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to a degree, for sure. We don't have two hours. Uh, we, ha we have about ten minutes left until we... But, but AJ, I asked you at the but, beginning, is this a talk show or is this a serious educational show? And you said, so please bear with yeah, but, me. But you're not Tucker please Carlson, and I'm not Vladimir Putin. So we don't really get to answer that question. But 
But ChatGPT wrote me that script based on that interview, so I don't know how to continue if I can't be Vladimir Putin and you be Tucker Carlson. I'm hoping ChatGPT also gave you the sauna bit, because that, that was pretty funny. No, I came up with that one, actually, myself. So, I, I love that. I love that. So, what are you investing in uh, right now? Bitcoin. I just like Bitcoin. That's yeah, cool. and, and also I just wanted that. to come in and quickly, as, as, a, as a serious note, say RGB is very interesting and a lot of people are sleeping on RGB. All the ordinals people are sleeping on RGB. All the, all the crypto people are sleeping on RGB. Even all the Bitcoin maximalists that are building RGB are sleeping on RGB. You, you guys got to check out RGB. It's, it's, it's going to melt faces. I love it. I love it. Brad, you're hilarious, man. Thank you so much for coming on this space, dude. Thanks for being here. I wanted to hear from Joey Vowles. Heard good things about you, Joey. How are you doing today, bro? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. I, um, I'm, I'm glad to be surrounded by some friends up here. Good things, Riggs. Uh, been friends with them for a long time. Glad to make some new friends as well. Uh, I'm going to take a little different approach. Everybody keeps talking about, you know, making money and how to make money. Um, but the one thing that I've learned over the last few years is when to cut my losses. Um, I think all too often we don't talk about that strategy and it like we're, we're so it's always like the wins, right? Like how do we leverage trade? How do we, you know, uh, following trends and, but the last thing that I learned in this space, which was probably the thing I wish I would have learned first was how to put in a stop loss when to know, you know, like those type of things. So for me, that's the biggest thing I've learned in the last couple of years. And that's probably what I would stress the most to people, whether you're trading NFTs or crypto is always have a number in mind where it's like, if it hits this number, I'm selling regardless. And then if it, you know, if it keeps, if it keeps falling, okay, maybe I'll buy back in or whatever the case is. But, you know, I, I've held stuff for way too long before, and I'm not going to do that again. For sure, bro. Like, do not fall in love with your bags. That is like one of the, one of my three rules in crypto is to not fall in love with your bags, knowing, yeah, it's about winning, but it's also definitely about not losing. Uh, I, I can certainly get behind that. And this is also like, you know, of course, I have my strategy separated between like, okay, this right here is for my long term. I'm not selling this until these levels. And, you know, I, if I have my levels set, I have a couple actual separate scenarios on with if things turn around here, what I do, if things turn around here, what I do. And for each coin, I have my level set and probably five or six scenarios for each long term hold. And then, you know, there's my long term holds and then there's my intraday trades, scalp trades. So, like, definitely knowing the difference. Uh, is certainly something people should do because some people will say, oh, I'm going to buy, uh, you know, $5,000 of optimism or whatever. And then they it goes up 5% and then they send me a DM and say, should I take profits? And I say, well, did you write down your goal for this trade before you clicked go on the exchange? And most of the time, they don't. Most of the time, especially new traders, uh, like to just throw money at letters. And, uh, you know, that, that they're going to have to pay for those mistakes or listen to someone who's been through it before. And, that you know, that's why we have these conversations. So, Joey, I definitely got a lot out of your share, man. Thanks, thanks for sharing. I, I, um, I got I to say, I, I agree with all of these points, too. Um, and sorry for just, like, jumping in here. Um, you're good, but, you're good. But, yeah, I want to say, like, you know, trading and investing, like, everyone's got their own style, right? So... I know these are all tips that are, are very valid, but some of these tips are more valid for a specific type of, of, of trading style, whether you're doing scalping or, or flipping, long-term investing, swing trading, kind of attention investing with NFTs. Obviously, not being married to your bags is, a, is, is, is one of the best ones, and it can apply you know, basically across the board because becoming a community member is the number one way to, to ride that collection down to, to zero, potentially. Um, but, I mean, you know, some communities are worth joining and, and, and some communities are, you know, e equally worth the, the price and provide way more value than the NFT, or at least it's, it's worth. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think there's just so many different ways that you can approach trading and investing. Uh, but I think the most important part is, just kind of exploring and, and figuring out something that you have comfort in, that you can find conviction in, 
that you can sleep through at night. And if you can't sleep through at night, then you probably are just going to go into like the day trading approach. And if you're successful at that, if you experiment, if you pay your dues with losses and so forth, you know, that this is all just going to be one big experiment. I mean, uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the way that I kind of approach it is, is more of like the George Soros style of, of, of trading and, you know, high conviction opportunities, they come up once in a while. I'd, I'd rather be right four times a year than 400 times a year. Um, and then when I, you know, am right, you know, kind of size the position accordingly. So I think it really just depends on what your risk tolerance is because a lot of people aren't necessarily comfortable in having, you know, 50% of, of, of a of kind of a portfolio of a risk portfolio into a single idea or 30% or so. So it really just depends on uh, at the end of the day, like what you're comfortable in, what you can understand, what you can get good at. Um, but, but obviously, you know, managing your risk is, you know, equally important. I can, I can attest to the, to the tips that you guys said, you know, if you have a price in mind for, for something you know, uh, m my philosophy on a lot of these NFT trades and even some of these token trades is always just look forwards and not backwards. So if I'm in a trade and I'm and I'm there early and I'm happy with what I sold it at, I'm not going to be buying it back at any price. Um, you know, m maybe if it dips down way, way below, but, you know, if your philosophy in trading is getting in early, riding kind of a 3, 4, 5x, in a very risk-free way or, or risk-minimized way, um, I think the, the most important part for me is just having a philosophy of always looking forward rather than backwards. So, you know, if I exit a trade, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm there, I'm not looking back at the chart, seeing how much higher it pumps, feeling FOMO and, and so forth to really make those mo bad emotional decisions. Can I add something real quick too? Everybody was talking earlier about um, you know, whether it's joining a group and we joke about like a cabal and stuff like that. I think it's really important to, to stress when you're looking to join, if it's a trading group or a community, you make sure that your, your risk tolerance to his point and your, it like lines up. Like I, to be honest, like rigs trades at a lot higher, um, capital, I guess if you want to say, then I can. So I'm I'm not going to copy trade rigs because I just can't get into some of the trades that he can get into, right? So I think it's important to your point, just to echo what you're saying, farmers. Like everybody, not everybody is the same. So surround yourself with individuals that, when you are working together, you're working within those same circles. So you're not being left behind by somebody who you know, has a higher risk tolerance than you and you're starting to make risky plays with a small bag and next thing you know, you can't recover the same way they can. Yeah, Joey, I agree with you. It's, it's like if you're good at NFTs and, and, and your your cabal or social circle and trading group is all about, you know, 50, 50 to 100x perps, um, you're probably taking advice from the wrong people. You're in the wrong cabal basically because you're never going to get good at something. You, you got to just be in your clan, right? Like, uh, that's, a, that's the thing. Like, yeah. And then, and then blindly following people too. Like, no matter how trustworthy is a source, if it's outside of your scope, you know, you, you might have one or two, you know, big wins from, from kind of copy trading them. But over the long haul, copy trading someone is, is, is kind of a negative EV equation. It can work for a very short term, but you know, it, it, over the longer term course of time, you're going to get burned and you're not going to understand why you're, you're not really going to have time to develop a functional skill set in just critical thinking on your own. Every decision has to be made under your own doing rather than just blindly following someone. And, and I mean, like we, we're all, we're all victims to it. Uh, follow, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've copy traded some individual, uh, ideas or if, if the source is, is good enough, I might, kind of punt a small allocation or punt a small bag, but, you know, it's about managing your risk in those copy trade scenarios where you're kind of entering a, a, a thesis that you don't fully understand or align with and, you know, you kind of have to limit your, your, uh, your, your, your risk there as a byproduct. Well put, well put. I mean, I, I completely agree. I feel like a lot of new traders, uh, you know, kind of lean on... Uh, just straight up calls from other people 
Uh, I kind of, I kind of got to go by the guideline of like discipline creates consistency and consistency builds success. And like, you know, being a crypto influencer myself, I would try rather to teach people how I find positions and why I go into the trades I go into, not go long at this coin at this level. I, you know, I, like, I do do shout out sometimes, but I would rather teach people how to do it themselves and, you know, and be consistent with it and use risk management, all the things rather than just telling them what to do. Uh, that, that has always been a much better strategy for myself here. So going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody in this space right now, about 2,300, 2,400 people in this space. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you give some love to all the speakers up here on the panel with me. Also, I'd like to point your attention to the tweet up there in the nest for Mario's um, Telegram group and uh, Mario's newsletter. A lot of really good alpha going on in the newsletter and the Telegram group in the second tweet in the nest. Bef definitely check that out if you want to learn more about either of those things. And now we are going to pivot into the sponsor segment of of the show. Uh, don't go anywhere. This this is actually a really interesting uh, sponsor that I, I think a lot of people might have a lot of questions for once uh, he does his pitch. Uh, so right now, uh, Kyle from Limits Express, I'm going to give you 90 seconds to do uh, a pitch or peril, kind of a quick overview of uh, what you're doing, what your idea here is, and then I'll ask you a couple questions, then I'll open it up to the panel to ask you a couple questions, and we'll go from there. So Kyle, 90 seconds, the floor is yours. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you guys having me in the space. I, I really love this community. I kind of want to touch on what I had heard earlier, where you guys really talked about joining a space like this for knowledge when you're getting started. You, know, you might have the capital, but not the knowledge. So joining a space like this can really help you make money. And while we're on the topic of, you know, making money, that's exactly what we have to offer. So we might not be crypto and NFTs and all the stuff that you're talking about, but basically our business model is Amazon FBA. And to, to simplify it as, as much as possible, it's really going out and purchasing wholesale products at, you know, in bulk at really cheap pricing, just like something like Colgate toothpaste or deodorant or, or mouthwash products like those getting those products in, packaging them, putting our own labels on them, getting them sent off to Amazon, and then selling those for a profit. And where you know the listeners come in and where everybody else comes in is we built a community where we take on clients and we take on investors, where we pool their money together to go out and place these large purchase orders. If you're placing only a $5,000 or $10,000 purchase order with these distributors that we're sourcing our products from, you're not going to get good pricing. But when you can pool a bunch of money together and place $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 purchase orders, we're able to get the, the access to the best pricing possible. And on Amazon, you know, products are going to sell. It's just about you're making the money on the buy. So when we can get access to really, really cheap pricing and pool that money together, we can get that inventory in. Every All of our clients have their own store after that. We just get them that price. We get it sent off to their store and we completely manage and operate the rest. We handle all the stuff A to Z from, you know, the customer service returns everything that would have to do with your store. It's just a, another form of investing in, in passive income where they can put capital and then they can get the return on, on that money on a monthly basis. Right now, we average a 25% return on our client stores and they link their bank account to it as well. So they send money for inventory. They get the, they get that money into, into their Amazon store, sells through, and they receive that initial inventory that they spent plus the profit as well. And then they just turn that right back over and spend the next month. And it's just a rinse and repeat cycle. Wow, dude, not bad. I, I, so, so I, this is, you know, something outside of crypto, but I could definitely see this being, you know, a viable investment vehicle for anybody just trying to even like, you know, uh, like something steady, some sort of passive income, like letting your money work for you kind of thing. You know, how, like how long have you guys been, has been building on this, building this idea out? Yeah, I mean, in terms of running the automation, we've been doing it for a little over a year now. And it's definitely not, you know, although it's not crypto and it's not NFTs, and, you know, I, and I heard kind of talking about earlier, um, you know, trying to become a millionaire overnight. And, you know, you guys were kind of cautioning it against that. And, and I'll just tell you right now, it's not something that 
you are going to become a millionaire overnight, but it is something that's long term. It's 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 very sustainable. I think Am- the number is Amazon does about like one point two nine billion dollars in revenue a day. So just for you to take up a small small percentage of that pie, you're still able to make a ton of money on Amazon. So we already know that the products are going to sell. It's just about combining that money from with all of our clients that we have on to get access to the cheapest pricing and where where we're able to win and our clients are able to win and they don't have to do any of the work and they can make passive income through this. Right. So, 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 so my question to you is like, you know, anybody could do an Amazon FBA service. Yep. Like why would they like opt to do it with you instead of trying to do it on their own? Like what advantage do you, do you give them? Yeah. I mean, in terms of doing it on your own, you know, we'll, we'll, we encourage anybody to go out there and and try on your own if it's what you're trying to do. But a lot of people have the capital and don't have the time. So this is, this is directed towards those type of people or they just don't want to do it. I will say it's, it's definitely something that's hard to get started in because when you're trying to go reach out to these wholesale distributors to get access to catalogs and open accounts with them, if you only have five or 10 or $15,000 in capital to place an order, they're, they're probably going to turn you away and not even open you up an account. And they're definitely not going to give you any discounted pricing. And, you know, to compete on Amazon, you have to be able to get some discounted pricing. So, again, that's just where, you know, we don't have the cap, you know, the capital to be placing four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars every single month. And that is where our, our clients come in. And we're all able to pull that together to get access to the best pricing. They will give us deals before it even hits their main catalog. They will also be able to give us 10, 15 percent off so that we can, like, I, like I've said so many times, you know, get access to that best pricing and, and get that sent in to, to our client stores to make the highest ROI for them. Interesting. I, I do want to open it up to the panel that might have questions for you as well. But I, I, I have a question for you before we do that. Uh, you know, like the the e commerce world, you know, it, it changes the ebb and the flow, just like it, it would with crypto every day. Like, uh, how do you stay, you know, up to date with the the trends and developments in e commerce? Like, what pro- products to buy, what products to not buy? Like, how, how do you like make those calls? Yeah, it, it, it's the beauty of Amazon where. You know, we're, we're selling general merchandise products, so we're not selling something that's seasonal, something that, you know, you're, you're going to sell a little bit here and then it's going to drop off for the rest of the year. We're selling, like I said, things like Colgate toothpaste, like Dove soap, like deodorant, mouthwash, things that people are going to buy no matter what. So when we go onto Amazon, you know, so many people commonly think that if they go right now and they check out on Amazon, that the product's going to be coming from Amazon themselves. And that's not, you know, they do source their own products, but so much of it is third party sellers just like us. So, you know, that's where, um, you know, we're able to capitalize on the e-commerce titan that Amazon is. And we know how much a product is moving. You know, if if we look at at a product, we can tell how many sales it gets a month. And we can also look at the stock on that, that, that listing as well. So like, let's say, you know, let's use the example because we're using it, Colgate toothpaste. If that sells 5,000 times a month, but there's 15,000 units in stock across all sellers, we're not going to get on that because we know that, you know, it, it has way more stock. It's simple supply and demand stuff. But when there's a listing that sells, again, like 5,000 times a month and there's only 1,000 units in there, we know that we're going to be able to, to go in and compete for that buy box. And also we're checking at, at, you know, if we can get it for the right price. So, you know, we're looking at a bunch of analytics. We're looking at the price history, what it's been at before, what it's sold at before. And, you know, if, if at its lowest price in the past and it doesn't have a lot of stock in there, if we're still able to make, you know, again, like I said, we average about a 25% ROI for our clients. If we're still able to hit that benchmark, then that's something that's getting added to our purchase order. Awesome. awesome. Well put. We got my guy Ruto with his hand up. Ruto, what do you got? What's up, AJ? You uh, handsome SOB. Pleasure to be on here, man. Um, yeah, Limits Express, it's funny. I, 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 my previous um, background, digital marketing, I handled media buying, ad spend, like uh, eight figures for different clients and stuff like that. And I worked a lot closely in the like, e-commerce industry as well from like 20, 2015 to like 2018. So I, I know a good amount about especially like Amazon FBA, I think the issue is that um, it's not necessarily like the the product sourcing because there's so many different resources online where you can find like good manufacturers or, or uh, for product sourcing um, overseas. But I think the biggest issue is getting um, people who have the capital, but not necessarily the time, but also it's like you can have access to the capital and access to these uh, manufacturers and distributors uh, for the product. The issue is getting ranked um, higher and usually it's pretty difficult for someone who's like has a fresh or newer store 
to get ranked higher on those lists for and regardless of the product so like do you guys do like marketing on your side do you look uh do you have different ways on like how these guys can get ranked higher on amazon for specific products because in my mind that's actually the hardest um the capital and then the uh sourcing for the products is actually not that difficult if you have um either a solid network in the fba industry or like if you have the capital for it so what what does your team do to make sure that you're actually getting listed um relatively high for these products because that's by far the hardest part yeah, it, it's a great question. It's a common question that we'll get, you know, when we when we talk to client, you know, potential onboarding clients. And and the answer is pretty simple is that what you're talking about is is white labeling and private labeling a product going overseas and branding your own product. What we're doing is selling on big brand name products that are already proven sellers. So that's where I completely agree with you. When you get into the, the white label, the private label space, that is absolutely the hardest part to get started. And you can lose a lot of money because you can, you know, you can buy $5,000 worth of inventory and not sell one of those units because you can't get ranked high and you can even spend more money on marketing where we don't have to spend any money on advertising or marketing because like I said, Colgate toothpaste, if, if you know, we're looking at the analytics and it says it gets 5,000 sales on Amazon a month, it's going to get those 5,000 sales, whether it comes from us or whether it comes from anybody else. So it's just about getting the right price to win the buy box. And what winning the buy box means in simple terms is really just if you have the cheapest price, sometimes there's some other things that can go off of, sometimes location and, and how much you're in stock and stuff like that. But you know, to boil it down, most of the time to win that buy box, you just need to have the cheapest price. So you don't need to spend anything on marketing. You can be on a fresh account as well. I know you brought that up. You can be on an account that you made yesterday. And if you have the cheapest price and you send your inventory in, you're going to beat out someone that might may have been there, you know, for, for five years now, if, you, if you're beating them pretty significantly in price. So that's where it's a great question, but we are on the wholesale side of selling big brand name products. Again, like your Colgate, to your dove and in, in, in products like that so we don't have to spend any money on marketing and advertising we're just looking to get at the cheapest price and we know we're going to be able to move it if we can get it for those prices yeah the, the problem though is that you let's say you created an account yesterday uh, an amazon fba account you actually can't sell um branded products like obviously white label stuff or like stuff that you private label you can for sure but like colgate right to sell colgate if i were to create an amazon fba account today and i wanted to sell colgate toothpaste i wouldn't be able to you you yep. have to have you have to have um, uh, like pre existing sales on previous products, um, and you also have to get um, you have to get confirmed and registered like from Amazon. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm no no. But, so you're, yeah. you're you're you're. You're absolutely right. So we don't start people off on Colgate and Dove because you're absolutely right. You need to hit about a $20,000 sales benchmark before you're going to get ungated. And what ungated means on Amazon is just getting approval to sell on the listing. Because yes, before you sell anything on Amazon, you have to get ungated for that product first. And if, if you don't get ungated right away, we'll submit an invoice. But you're absolutely right. If you make an Amazon account today and try to sell on Colgate, you're most likely going to be gated for that product. So that's why we have a bunch of smaller brands that we know we can get people on gated. Yeah, that's, what, uh, that's, 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 that's where it is. That's what I was just yep. going to say. If, if anything, yep. that's, that's probably your biggest value prop, in my opinion. Looking at your business model, that's your biggest value prop is like, hey, you don't have, you don't have any pre-registered sales prior. Like you don't have the 20K units sold. Yep. We, can, we can help you already like get past that that front kick, like kick down that door. That's probably your highest value prop. But I've heard of a, a ton of other people doing the same business model as you. It's actually a really good business because like overhead's incredibly low and you're essentially using, you know, other people's like capital and liquidity to to lift up like your, uh, your different distribution channels. So yeah, I mean, I think it's dope, dude. I, I have friends who do this, the exact same thing as you and they've scaled it to, you know, seven, eight figures like annually. So um, good shit, man. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. Awesome. awesome. Love it. Really informative. Rudo, I'm glad that you know so much about this, really kind of broaden the scope of the conversation that we probably would have had otherwise. So thanks for your input, man. We really appreciate you. Uh, rigs are good things. Joey, do you, any of you have questions for Kyle? Um, so is essentially, if I, if I understand it correctly, are, are the people you're targeting – are individuals that essentially don't have the time to get, the, they, they want to get into it, but they don't have the time. So this is a way for them to deploy capital 
almost like a like a fractionalization kind of thing where it's like you're we're just all deploying capital with you and then you're utilizing that capital is that kind of how it works or am i missing it yeah a- absolutely and so you know it, it's definitely a, a lot of the cases is people that have the capital been wanting to get into some e-commerce stuff or primarily amazon and just don't have the time to do it but it's also you know i know this this you know space is centered so much around crypto but it's also just another way to diversify out your your investments you know um I, you know, I, I love, um, you know, the, the crypto space and whatnot, but sometimes it is smart to also diversify out and, you know, to not have all your eggs in one basket. So it is a place to, to park money elsewhere and build up another business elsewhere. And yeah, it's exactly what we're doing is pooling these, these clients money together. So like, let's say, you know, if, if you were to send $10,000 for inventory today, that $10,000 is going to get used on a much larger purchase order, maybe a four, 400, $500,000 purchase order. We get the products into our warehouse and you can check our warehouse out on our website. We have pictures of our warehouse in there, but we're, we have our employees in here. They're going to take your $10,000, put your individual SKU labels on it. So Amazon knows they're checking in your units. We'll send that $10,000 dollars worth of inventory off to your store and then that's going to sell through and we always look to sell through that inventory within a 30-day period once it reaches amazon once that sells through you plug in your own bank account to that you receive not only the ten thousand dollars you spend on inventory but you receive the profit on top of that as well like i said we average about a 25 percent return so you're going to receive twelve thousand five hundred dollars into your bank account now of course we do take a profit split from that we take a 40 percent profit split and what we'll do is we wait a month and then we're, we invoice you for our 40% just to make sure, you know, if any returns come through and also that all your payouts get received. Awesome. Kyle, my question for you is like, you know, you've been working on this for a while now. I know you guys like started with Facebook. I know you guys, you know, have a, a consistent YouTube channel with over 350 videos. Uh, you know, you and Hunter have been out at this for a little while. My man, like what's like your, your, the long-term goal here, like over the next like four or five years, like where do you, where do you see it going? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we have have plans of being in this space for a very long time. Amazon's something that's super long term, super sustainable. And you know, if you don't believe that Amazon's going anywhere, then then you know you 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 believe that we're going to be around for a long time. I mean, the the sh- there's no shortage of products and deals. And you know, I know um, we we were just talking about that, and, and another speaker had mentioned that um, that that you know that that's definitely not the hard part the amount of deals that are out there so we are trying to just purchase more and more on a monthly basis and scale our business that way because the more we spend on a monthly basis and the more we develop these relationships with these suppliers we work with and get to the top of that supplier chain just the the cheaper pricing we're going to get so you know we we do know people i know he had mentioned it there's other people in the space doing it that you know at, at even a higher scale than we are right now we have you know and, and we have a couple of those people who who we actually to use as mentors and talk to and and we have you know we're, we're trying to get up to spending three four five million dollars a month and beyond on inventory because we know when we get there you know we're already getting access to really good pricing and getting you know an average of a 25 percent return but we know that we can be averaging a 35 a 45 a 50 percent return on this inventory it's just a matter of time of you know how long it takes us to get there you know bringing on investors bringing on these clients to pull that money together to be spending that much. So we we plan on, you know, staying in, in the space for a long time and and have very, you know, high hopes moving forward. Awesome. And say if someone wanted to like, you know, set up a call with you um, and like set up their own Amazon store with you, like what, what would be the steps to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you click on my Twitter in my bio, you can schedule a Calendly call with me. It's a 30 minute call. We can get on there. I can answer any questions you have. You know, I know we just went through a run through on here, but um, you know, I'm sure you're going to have a bunch more questions and, and you know, um, we can go through all that stuff. If you want to look at our client stores and, and look at some of those results, we have some of those on our website. We have videos going through some client stores on YouTube as well, but also we can just get on there. I can pull up other client stores. I can show you the results they're getting. I can show you the products they're selling, where they are in the buy box, what they're selling it for, all that stuff to make you feel a little more comfortable. And also, you know, we, we have a lot of people that, that will start just smaller, see it work, start with a couple thousand dollars for inventory, see it go in, see it, you know, get into Amazon, sell through, see the return you get on it. And then scale from there. So, you know, you don't have to dive, you know, with all, you know, a bunch of capital in right away. So, um, 
yeah, you can absolutely book a Calendly call with me, and we can go through all that stuff on you know on a thirty minute call. Awesome, Kyle. Man, man, thanks so much for coming on the show today, bro. We really appreciate it. Before we peace out, do you have any any uh, final thoughts, closing thoughts? No, I, I really I love the space that you guys have here, and I really appreciate you guys, you know, having me a part of it. And um, yeah, like I said, if anyone's looking to to book a call with me, it's in the link in my description, and I look forward to speaking with you on on a call. Awesome, Kyle. Thanks so much for being here. Everybody, also, make sure you go give Limit Express, the Twitter page, a follow. Uh, I know that they are, are pretty large on, like, YouTube and on other social platforms, but are relatively new to Twitter. So definitely go give them a follow and help them build their Twitter account so they can get a, you know, get a little big, bigger reach here on Twitter. Uh, I, you know, even myself, I mean, I'm you believe it or not, AJ Writes Crypto has only been on Twitter for two years. I understand uh, not being big on, uh, on Twitter when there's so many other platforms to spread the word on. So definitely go give Limit Express some love definitely point your attention to the top in the nest there there's the tweet uh for the limit express company and another tweet for the newsletter and the telegram group for mario's alpha if you want to get involved with that as well so with that being said really appreciate everyone here everybody in the audience make sure you go give limit express a follow and a follow to all the speakers on stage we'd really appreciate that with that being said have hope everybody has a safe rest of their day my name is aj rice crypto get rich or get wrecked later